I am a mental health nurse now required to attend healing racial trauma training. Oh. Presenter's website full of CRT lingo, critical race theory lingo. Sent letter to my human resources person with help from James Lindsay website, New Discourses. I'm now nervous in Ann Arbor. Thoughts? Love you too. Um, I'll bet yeah. Ann Arbor's gone a bit woke. That's where we did our graduate work. And it was a lovely, lovely town. A bit cold at some times of the year. but a bit um, hot at other times of the year. Yeah, I could deal with the hot more easily. Um, but yeah, I'll bet that R1 university in a relatively small town with a lot of culture and a fair bit of uh, federal money coming in from grants has uh, made it pretty woke and I feel your pain. Um, you don't say what has happened. You know, maybe you've just sent the letter to the, to HR uh, and you don't, you don't have a response yet. I don't know. I don't know what to say yeah. more than that. I mean, unfortunately I think there is nothing to say. It's dangerous. I hope it goes well. I do think we need to develop a modality as we started to on our last um, podcast, getting people to write down their faulty claims so that they are checkable in the future and that they cannot escape them is one feature of that landscape. In this case... If it's a training, you can't you can't well, ask the person doing the training think, to do this. I don't think that one's applicable here, but yeah. what would I do here? Uh, I think... I would be trying to introduce the idea that that solution you are proposing is a threat to something that is serving everyone. In other words, mm. there's a problem to be solved. The solution you are proposing to it threatens to destroy much more than you realize is in its scope. Um, and I don't know, frankly, I don't think an individual is going to be in general in any position at all to do that in a context like the one you describe. But somehow, to the extent that we, as a larger group of people talking about this, can lodge in the discussion. Um, and well, in fact, uh, I was talking to Douglas Murray in my podcast with him several days ago, and he pointed out, uh, so my claim to him was that the woke revolution is actually going to destroy we've got a system that fails to meet its objective there's a gap between what it does and what it aspires to do mm -hmm. but that the challenge to the system as a whole is going to evaporate the well-being that the system is delivering and distributing yes unfairly but distributing to everybody mm -hmm. and what douglas said that i i was unaware of he said this is reminiscent of Kant's point about the bird that thinks that um, the air, which is causing uh, um, drag, drag, yes, mm -hmm. uh, is the obstacle to it flying really fast. And if only the air could be done away with, it would be that much speedier. When in fact, Man, it wouldn't would, that be the life? Yeah, when it can't fly yeah. at all without the air. So, to the extent that we can start making this point to people, look, you have no idea what you are threatening. Yes, mm -hmm. there are real problems with how well-being and opportunity are distributed. There just are. Um, but you're going to kill the thing that makes well-being exist at all, and it's not going to be good for anybody, including the people that you think you're helping. Um, so I don't know that we can make that resonate, but it, it's the kind of thing, one person saying it isn't going to be enough, saying it multiple times isn't going to be enough, but to the extent that that message begins to come from different places and it causes some who are on this bandwagon to think, oh, wait a second, I could, I could evaporate the very thing that I'm trying to see distributed more fairly. Um, yeah, I'm trying to enhance mental health, for instance, um, across people and attending a healing racial trauma training, having, having to incorporate such thinking into the rest of what I do may actually cause everything to decline in quality. And yes. I mean, may, I, I feel certain it absolutely will, but you obviously have to couch things more gently for an audience that can't hear it. Yeah. And I would also just add this whole idea of healing racial trauma. It sounds so right. And it is yeah. so backwards because the yeah. fact is what you actually need is opportunity. If you've been frozen out of opportunity, what you need is opportunity and the tools to make use of it. And uh, my experience dealing with people all over the world is 
as soon as you have that opportunity and the tools to utilize it, the trauma scars over, right? It's not like it's gone. It's not like the history evaporates. But the point is, it is not an obstacle to day-to-day -to -day well-being, functioning, happiness, any of those things as soon as the problem is addressed. Well, I mean, this is an analogy that you've used under a lot of, um, in a lot of circumstances here, but it really is so apt, is that um, you don't, we will all experience injury in life, some of it literal, some of it metaphorical. And at first it creates wounds and long-term, short, as short-term as possible, we hope that it scars over such that the wounds are a thing of the past without ever pretending that the injury did not happen. You retain the scar, you don't retain the wound. And that so much of the modern ideology is about picking and picking and picking and picking and making sure that you never scar over so that there is always exposed wound to display to people and to announce about how how awful you have it and how it can never be made right. And that is in part a result of the constant picking at it. Yes, yeah, so keeping the wound open because the wound is your entitlement to you know, to be given something. Yeah. And like, you know what, the injury happened. What, you know, whatever, in some cases, people are just making shit up, right? But presume that there's something real here. The injury happened. The scar can still be your indicator of injury, but also allow you to move forward. And a wound specifically keeps you mired in the past and keeps you from, from becoming anything better. And, you know, part of, part of it is exactly what we're talking about in the first hour. You know, your, your, your pessimism about so about you know being able to fix whole swaths of the population is I, I think in part based on um, you you seeing that so many people are busy picking at their wounds uh, and uh, and sh mm. sure a hundred I, I know it's not entirely I know that there's another big part of it which is that they you know they they, they arrive you are arguing uh, without. Uh, an ability to full you know, without an ability to to win in a meritocracy. Yeah, without tools. Um, but certainly, it, it only makes it worse if you if what is being told to them, and this is being this is happening in the K twelve schools and higher ed. So this is happening for people across all levels where they still could generate a toolkit with which to actually move forward with um, creativity and analysis and productivity. Uh, and if what they're being told instead is keep focusing on your wounds and the wounds of others and how wounded they are compared to you, uh, well, no one's going to win ultimately, except the very few people who are in charge of, uh, I don't know, wound defining. Yeah. I would say that in, you know, if <clears throat> we go back to the question of can we agree on a collective objective that says, that uh, replaces the you know the left right oscillation mm -hmm. as a control mechanism? The point is, look, you have an obligation to make yourself as capable as possible, right? Mm -hmm. To deal to scar over rather than keep your wounds open. Having done that, mm -hmm. we have an obligation to make the system fair, yes. right? To the extent that the system isn't fair, we have work to do, but you also have work to do. And it is the partnership between those things. You make yourself as capable as possible. Yep. We'll make the system fair, you know, as quickly as possible. That's the shared objective. And it doesn't involve, oh, I'm not going to make myself capable at all because the reason I'm not capable is unfairness and, you know, take care of me. Like, that's just not a stable long-term pattern.